Okay, so I'm going to call to order the uh, June 17, 2020 uh, regular meeting of the Royal Oak Downtown Development Authority. Uh, first order of business is to have a roll call. And I will start with Director Riley. You're muted also. I, uh, everybody. Are... I'm here. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, Director Rosbeck. Here. Director London. Here. Director Brake. Uh, present. And Director Yazbek. Just dialed in. Yep, I see him now. Unmute, Tony. There he goes. Hi. Okay. We'll take that as a present. That's okay. a really friendly, friendly present. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, item number three is public comment. We should listen to that now. Yes, one moment. North Troy Street, apartment 1511. My comment tonight is I'm going to be sending a letter hopefully to, uh, uh, to, to the uh, PDA shortly, expressing my wishes that the uh, city look again at creating a really great downtown park. And uh, I want to point out that uh, in New York City, there are, uh, the Conservancy, the Central Park Conservancy is offering virtual tours and, uh, and uh, with uh, support for city parks and uh, to generate more support. I feel that the uh, city park, if it's done properly, will bring a lot of business to the city. And I am ashamed at the fact that our city has overlooked resident quality of life largely. And uh, I also would like to point out that out of 54 parks, we do not have a bicycle trail. We do not have uh, a, walk, no, a, a walking, a real walking trail. Uh, uh, we do not have any retention ponds that uh, hopefully would be aerated to prevent mosquitoes and uh, to, to cut down on that, but also provide uh, a place for uh, fish and, uh, and uh, ducks, uh, herons, frogs, turtles, et cetera. In other words, natural attractions that people can enjoy, and it would attract people to the city. I want to point out that all this fly fishing has to go out of the city in order to demonstrate fly casting in Maryland or whatever you. We do not have one pond attraction in all 54 parks. Now, I've said before, and I'll say it again, surrounding town cities are doing this. Uh, Birmingham is not as good as I would like it to be, but it's a lot better than we're look right now. Uh, we have to use, remove the monument so we can have a lawn and in front of the uh, in front of the uh, library, and that uh, and the in the front of the library this would provide a stage if it could be fixed up properly. LED lights were fairly inexpensive now, and if we added another mountain. And if we put colored lights on the fountain on Star Dream structure, this would provide a magnet for people to come to the city. Please wake up and realize that this is the only thing we need to spend money on. Promotions and all this stuff is history. We have, have events that focus on alcohol and now uh, recreational marijuana. Come on, you gotta be serious, can't be serious. This is what what Royal Oak is. Do you really want Royal Oak to be about? We need to get out of the control of special interests that are controlling the DDA and the City Commission by political contributions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay. Well, it's a public comment. Okay. So I'm going to close public comment at this time and move on to item agenda number four, approval of the meeting minutes from May 27th, 2020. 
this is, uh, if you ever had a chance to look at them, any additions or corrections to those minutes or questions? I'll Seeing move. none, I'll Director move. Riley? I'll move to approve. Motion to approve. I'll need a second. I'll, I'll second that. Thank you, Director London. Um, uh, we have a second by Director London. All those in favor, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. Item number five is Mike, expense items. Mike, I believe you still need to do roll call on all of them. On every on every item agenda. Yes. Okay. All right. So back to item four. I'm going to call for a roll roll call vote. Uh, Director Yesbik. Aye. Director Riley. Yes. Director Brake. Yes. Director London. Yes. Director Rossmark. Yes. Thank you. Okay, item number five, expense items, monthly expenses. This would just be for uh, informational purposes only. And if there's any questions, I see one hand raised, uh, Director Riley. Well, real, real quick, um, Sean, the Royal Oak Today ad on the uh, $1,500, that's part of last year's Correct. Correct. Got it. Okay. Good enough. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions regarding the expense items or? Okay. Then we'll just move on. Item number six community publishing agreement. I believe, Sean, this is probably you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, actually, uh, yeah, community publishing agreements, uh, I'm sure all of you may be familiar with the publication Royal Oak Today. Uh, this past fiscal year, the DDA had an agreement with community publishing uh, to have a small article, about one page in length, uh, typically referred to as an advertorial, in uh, every one of their quarterly issues for the uh, fiscal year uh, 1920. And uh, that also included a full page color ad. So what's before the DDA today is a continuation of that agreement at the rate of $1,500 per issue, which is the same rate that we uh, had uh, this past fiscal year. Uh, in addition to that, um, there's, there's two other features uh, that uh, I believe uh, would be uh, helpful to include. Uh, the first thing would be to include uh, the printing of a six panel brochure uh, that is intended to advertise the Buy Local program uh, inserted into every copy of the July 2020 issue. Um, and that'll be mailed out to 32,000 homes in Royal Oak. Uh, the additional expenditure for that, for this uh, July issue, would be $4,500. Uh, finally, uh, there would be a direct mailer sent to 32,000 homes uh, mailed separately from the Royal Oak Today issue uh, to advertise the renewed buy local effort uh, for Small Business Saturday as well. So that would that would be in uh, uh, early November, late October, early November. Um, this is priced at an additional fifty-eight ninety. Uh, so this brings the total, uh, I guess, agreement with Community Publishing for this uh, proposed fiscal year to uh, sixteen thousand three hundred ninety dollars. And if the board concurs with this recommendation. Uh, there is a resolution prepared for its consideration. Okay, um, Director Riley. Yeah, Sean, um, the only question I have is the 4,500 uh, for the six panel brochure in the July 2020 issue. I, I, do you have an idea of when that would go out in July? Is it the beginning? Is it the end? Um, I believe it's mid July. I, I want to say, uh, and I'm just kind of pulling this from memory, I want to say that it's uh, the deadline to submit all of these materials is toward the end of June. I think that was June 25th or June 26th was the deadline. So they would go into printing after that. And then I want to say uh, about mid July, it would start going out and hitting mailboxes. So um, I think between like July 15th and 20th. Okay, and my, my only concern there is that, that with um, the buy local program, the way it's kind of emerged, and, 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 and we're going to get more clarification on this later, but it, it, I think it's gone from where we were going to have, quote unquote, you know, family Royal Oak 
cards. We were going to have a script and we were going to have some type of an e-card. And I think now uh, the script we're definitely going to do away with for several reasons. One, because the e-card is way more efficient and less labor intensive. And we even if we load it, we get uh, the majority of the money back. But I think um, the way the way I've read through everything, I think we do. I, do, I, do we still have a quote unquote uh, Royal resident card, or is that something that we're not doing now? No, that's something that the committee has recommended that the DDA move forward with, and that's also a, the second component of that buy local campaign that was approved by the DDA. So yes, we are moving ahead with it. Uh, in terms of implementation, I've been working pretty closely uh, with uh, our program assistant, uh, Jordan Sachs, uh, also uh, receiving a lot of advice from Siren PR. And uh, in those conversations, it was uh, recommended to me that we actually wait to send out the resident card because if we launch the resident card at the same time that we do the buy local program with the e-card, there's this worry that there'll be some confusion that people will conflate the two uh, and that uh, it, it would really kind of muddle the implementation and people might feel that this is more complex than they're able to kind of figure out on their own. So it was advised to us that we roll out the e-card and then see who's using it. And we can see who's using it based on their email address. So we can then start sending out the resident card uh, at a later date, uh, maybe toward the end of the summer, or maybe toward the time when we wanna focus on people reloading their e-cards. And people will already understand how the e-cards work at that point. And so adding that resident card wouldn't be such a daunting uh, item for them to try to understand all at the same time. Okay, and, and I totally, I, to, I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. I'm sorry, Jen. Let me just finish with the point. No. And, and my here's my concern. Um, by the time this rolls out, uh, for us to spend forty five hundred extra on this, we may be the the way I expect it because of all the other ways that we're promoting the twenty dollar, the twenty thousand twenty dollar e gift cards. They may all be gone because we talked about giving some to local businesses, for their employees, obviously, and, and and being able to sign up for the newsletter through other programs. By I wouldn't be surprised if by the middle of July, if the majority of them are spoken for, which is what we want. We want them to get out there as quick as we can. So I guess my question would be, can we make the decision to pull that 4,500? Or once we sign it, we got to do it. Or, or maybe move it later in the year to use for the Royal Oak uh, resident card. That yeah, that that can be moved later. It doesn't okay. have to be married to the to the second issue, the okay. issue. Right. If you want to move that to, I think what would what would it be next? Their uh, January issue, or even later, you know, to their last issue, which would be what, April or May. That's definitely possible. I, I, again, because I I'm, I'm just concerned that, that that if we run that in July, that by the time it gets out there the 20,000 20 gift cards have already been spoken for. I think there's a good chance. Of You're talking that. about the brochure instead of sending the brochure out in July or the, the, uh, the mailer card in October, which one are you referring to? Well, well the $4,500 that's in this budget is, I thought was for, oh, is that the mailer? Uh, the, oh, the 4,500 is for the six panel brochure. And then the mailer is 5890. Okay. Well, but um, my, in the brochure, you're intending to promote the the e gift cards, correct? Correct. Okay, and my point is, is that by uh, by the time mid July rolls around, a month from now, we might be already subscribed. Might not be. I don't know. Perhaps. Okay. Okay. Uh, Director Rosbeck. Uh, I was just going to share similar concerns with that six panel brochure. Uh, given the fact that you have to have everything nailed down by next Wednesday, it looks like, uh, for it to be printed by, um, for a July uh, edition. Um, I share uh, Director Riley's concerns because, again, I think we're, we're running the risk of uh, being late on some of the communications that you really want to get out. Quicker. Um, if you could postpone that brochure, it might help with more of your Small Business Saturday yep. uh, um, promotions because you're only getting 32,000 uh, addresses on a, on a carrier route, which 
we know is a lot larger, you know, Royal Oak's a lot larger than that. So maybe, maybe using the two in concert with one another would be a better spend. Okay. Well, I just want to check real quick with Director Yazbek. Did you want to add anything into this? Um, no, I've, I've been in conversations with the business marketing committee. I think we're all on the same page. Okay. So the recommendation is that is the, is the recommendation. I don't have the recommendation in front of me is the recommendation for all inclusive for the, the, the total program based on the $16,000, $390. Is that correct? Sean? Correct. correct. The 16,000 includes the six panel brochure, the direct mailer and the four issues or ads okay. at articles in, uh, in the, the quarterly issues. Okay, so um, uh, just for clarity purposes, it sounds like the, the committee and everybody seems to be on the same page that we should move forward with this, but we're concerned a little bit about the timing of the brochure and moving that back to a different quarter or a different time of the, of the year and utilizing it for possibly a different purpose, but whatever needs to be done at that time. Does sure. that, does that sound reasonable or fair? Okay. Yeah. And, and Sean, it would seem to me that the quickest way to get to uh, the residents is uh, for them to jump in on the, on the uh, e-cards is to sign up for the uh, downtown newsletter. Right. Does that, does that make sense? In other words, we could think that. Okay, cool. Uh, Matt, how are you going to get them to that newsletter? Um, Through the city? Through the city Facebook? Uh, Just curious. Well, well, there, there's, there's several ways we're going after it. I don't know whether, and this is up to Sean and Simon. I don't know. Uh, hi, Lindsay. <laughs> I don't know if we're going um, with a direct um, um, email to people who uh, um, are subscribed to um, Royal Oak. Um, like, like we all get the emails and notifications on meetings and stuff like that. So I'm not exactly sure. Um, I mean, there's several ways we're getting the word out. Sean, is it possible to change that, that uh, basically that tri brochure to have a, a, uh, a quarter panel of it be a tear off for a card? Um, it's certainly possible. Um, I imagine it would affect the quote that we had received for it, but yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, something we could do. And, and, and Jen, Jen, you're talking about uh, the, the Royal Oak resident card. So when we decide to come out with that, whether it's, yeah. you know, October or whatever, to do the panel with that, I think it's worth looking at. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, community at uh, Royal Oak today. Uh, okay. Uh, motion by Director Ross back. I'll second. Um, second by Director Yesbeck. I'm going to do a roll call vote on this one. Um, so I will start with Director Ross back. Yes. And Director Yesbeck. Yes. Director Brake. Yes. Director Riley. Yes. Director London. You're muted, Director London. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, and I will vote yes. So, um, uh, any nays in that? Okay, good. Motion passes. All right. Um, so, we will move on to item number seven now Drew Lane Podcast Advertising Agreement. Sean, did you want to start with this one also? Certainly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the Business Marketing Committee is recommending that the DDA advertise its, uh, well, several of its programs uh, on the Drew and Mike podcast, which is a, pop, a popular local podcast produced by Drew Lane Podcasts. Um, I'll add that it is the only Michigan-based podcast in the nation's top 100 and the number one podcast in Michigan, according to Spotify as well. Uh, so this is a very popular podcast. We've never actually done podcast advertising before. But I think there's some benefits to it uh, that might help us get the word out about a lot of our programs. Uh, podcast advertising is unique in the sense that um, we don't actually send them a commercial for them to air. 
Uh, it's actually done by the host of said podcast doing like a live read. And the advantage to that is that more people tend to be responsive to that kind of advertising uh, when it's done in that manner. Um, it's also uh, capable for us to kind of change the script whenever we need to. So if we wanted uh, the podcast host to talk about ride sharing uh, for one week, we could have him do that. Uh, the following week, if we wanted to change it up and say, we really want you to focus on uh, the buy local program, we want you to tell people where they can go to sign up for our newsletter. You know, we could send him that those bullet points or that script, however detailed that we want to send it, and it'll be read. Um, so it has that versatility that I think is really valuable, uh, especially when we're changing. We, we have a lot of versatile programs that we want to get the word out about. Um, so uh, let's see. So this campaign would be a initial 90 day advertising campaign. Um, and we're looking to feature the ride sharing program and the buy local program on this. Uh, and the recommended investment in this campaign uh, would be $24,000. And the DDA may recall that in the budget, there is already an established $200,000 line item for media buys uh, for this coming fiscal year. Um, there's also a, a resolution prepared for the DDA's consideration if, if, they, if they concur with this agenda item. Okay. Um, questions? I'll start with Director Riley. Yeah, I, I just want to add, add a little bit of background. Um, just so everybody understands, this uh, the podcast uh, does five shows a week. Uh, they basically post Monday through Friday mornings. So we're getting uh, at least 20 ads a week. Uh, in fact, if we get our stuff together, we'll get the first week in, in, in free, the last week in June. Uh, we're hoping that, that we can get Rideshare launched uh, with uh, next uh, Wednesday and Thursday podcast, which we post Thursday and Friday. Um, the, uh, the, the average downloads per day on this podcast are 152,000. Uh, the highest, I think, at one, I think their highest show was 450,000 one day. Um, the demographics skew nicely for us in this. Um, this is going to give us that uh, mid range, the 34 to I think it's 61 crowd, um, which will allow us to get the uh, younger crowd, to, if you will, the Gen Zs and the, and the, uh, is it Gen Zs and uh, millennials will be more with the social media crowd. This will get us the Gen Xs and the boomers, if you will. Um, we really like the fact that we can pivot um, on a moment's notice and whether it's Siren or Sean or whomever, um, you know, gets, gets them a read for the day. Uh, we literally could do it an hour before the show or even in some cases during the show if something breaks. Um, uh, Drew is very familiar with Royal Oak. He speaks positively of Royal Oak. Um, I think it's, uh, if, if anybody remembers back when the parking stuff blew up with Don Diamo, et cetera, et cetera, um, he was a staunch defender of ours that, you know, that there were plenty of, uh, garages nearby and, and you will get, uh, more than 30 second read on most days. If you listen to the show, he'll go on and he'll talk about a, uh, uh, a advertiser. Uh, I have, I've talked with their, their main advertiser, Zot Ford, who is their, their show advertiser and they, uh. The vice president of sales there told me that it's a, in all his years, it's the best dollars that they've ever spent because the podcast listeners are very loyal. They support and they understand that if they don't support the show and the show's advertisers, the show can go away because it's, you know, it's not a network produced show. Um, just to give you an idea on our, uh, on our TV ads, I think I, I, we, we ended up spending about the $18 per 1000 uh, viewers or listeners here we're spending two dollars and 66 cents per 1000 and we have no ad creation costs or 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 placement costs either for that matter it's just straight up uh we're paying for the the show and and and, and i would add sean that yeah we will kind of come out of the box with the uh with the buy local and the uber but but we have the ability to do whatever we want we could feature you know we could feature local businesses if we want to um, you know, or local sectors or something, you know, if, if, if retailers have a sidewalk sale going on for the week, be perfect. Stuff like that. Okay. Um, Mike, can I ask for some clarity? Sure. The, the proposal doesn't start till July 1st. Right. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make sure that was our, I think Matt indicated that 
we were going to do something in a couple of weeks, but. Right. Oh, Ed, are you saying there's some value add? What's, well, okay. I'm, saying, I'm saying the proposal that that's, was provided starts July 1st. Right. I think for payment, Tim, but I think what Matt is saying is they're going to give us some free spots if we can produce something prior to that. Yes, correct, Matt? No. correct. correct. Anything that's, 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 that's fine as long as we understand they're free. Yeah, absolutely. And anything that we get them before July 1st, they will run and it'll be no charge. That, that, that's absolutely. Okay. Um, any other questions for staff? No, no. Mr. Chairman, I, I would just like to add that we've we've done some of that in at Fifth Avenue, some uh, reading, some um, uh, like we're describing here, and and uh, and our experience was a ton of people talked about it. Hey, we heard your name on the radio. We heard, you know, we heard your name. Uh, so it, it definitely is an effective way to get these programs to 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 alert the the public that we're doing these things and, and trying to uh, help Royal Oak rebound. Oh, and, and, and Tony, I'm sorry, let me add a couple of things. Um, we, um, Sean and I had also talked about using a, a code when, 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 when listeners are, are, are responding, either, either using rideshare or uh, like, like, for example, if they're gonna go with Uber or whatever, that they use a, a Drew code and we can measure the, the efficacy of it. Same thing with the buy local, and um, also uh, I, their advertiser, uh, their their advertising guy told me that they're more than happy to put links on their uh, homepage of their website, which people go to almost every day, to whatever we want. If we want it to go to rideshare, if we want it to go to the newsletter, however we want to do it. Okay. Ed. Director Rossman. Yeah, this is Jennifer. Uh, I just want to. I want to double down on what uh, Tony and Matt are saying. Um, Drew, Drew's uh, radio show prior to this was one of the number one uh, rated shows on the radio. So uh, the podcast has definitely kept its same rating uh, and it has a loyal fan base. So I do agree that, you know, podcast. Uh, advertising, even, you know, I hate to say it, even advertising on NPR does, a, brings in a different crowd, um, a crowd that's, that's uh, maybe a little more uh, opportunistic in terms of uh, bringing their money into the city. So I do think that this is a good investment for us to make, and um, I, I definitely back this idea okay thank you um all right i'll entertain a motion if uh someone wants to make one i'll move to approve a Support. motion by director riley second seconded by director break is that correct sir yes yes okay thank you um any questions discussion at this point i'm going to do another roll call vote here i'll start with director riley Yes. Director London? Yes. Director Brake? Yes. Director Rosbeck? Yes. And Director Yesbeck? Yes. And I will vote yes. Any nays? The motion passes then. Thank you. Okay. Um, item number eight Factory Detroit add refresh. Uh, Sean, is this you also? This is me. I did a lot of writing this past week. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so the DDA may recall that about two years ago, uh, it worked with Factory Detroit Inc. Uh, to create uh, a series of television commercials, uh, some radio commercials, and a, uh, a large collection of digital stills that we could use as uh, uh, digital ads on social media, um, billboards, print, et cetera. Um, and we have been using those uh, for the past 24 months uh, this past year. Uh, we ran those commercials on Comcast, on WDIV, at Imagine Theater, at AMC, um, it's ACM Theaters, I guess. Uh, and uh, 
uh, also on, on like Pandora, we ran the, the, the audio ones as well. Um, since the COVID emergency that we've all been faced with, uh, starting about mid-March, we started to suspend all of that advertising, um, mostly because, you know, a lot of the ads, you know, the salon one, it didn't, you know, feature social distancing during a time, you know, when the salons were closed. Uh, we had the happy hour commercial where you, it featured people eating appetizers off of the same plate. So it kind of sent some messages that were going against some of the conventional wisdom that was, you know, being pushed at that time. Uh, so we just opted to suspend our advertising, you know, while all the retailers were closed and restaurants and salons were closed at the same time. Um, so as we continue to suspend them, uh, it just kept pushing back all of our ads later and later. So when we resumed, uh, we had March, April, and May and June's worth of advertising all squished into the last two weeks of June. Um, so it was kind of under threat to run into the next fiscal year. I spoke to the executive director and, and he and I both thought it was wise to just kind of cancel out our advertising for the remainder of the fiscal year and then start fresh with new agreements starting July 1. Uh, that being said, uh, we were also talking with the business marketing committee and uh, myself with Siren about potentially updating our messaging uh, for a post-COVID audience. So coming up with ads that, uh, you know, could be a little bit more sensitive to the tone and sensitive to what's going on here while at the same time uh, promoting people having an economic relationship and connection with their downtown. So uh, Lindsay and I uh, met with Mark Lance on two occasions, and we had some, uh, some really good conversations about how we could do that. Uh, Mark took that back to his team, and they came up with uh, a proposed uh, campaign that I think uh, is really powerful. And so basically, uh, that's submitted before you guys today for approval. So they would uh, create one uh, more television commercial and then some additional uh, items. I think uh, what I'd like to do, though, is actually turn it over to Mark Lance to get into more of the details of that proposal, um, you know, and he could, uh, you know, kind of elucidate, you know, some of the some of the, the themes and some of the ideas that they came up with. Okay, Mr. Lance. Thank you. Uh, some of you I've met before, some I haven't. Uh, yeah, about three weeks ago, I think it was, uh, Sean uh, reached out to me uh, about possibly putting some ideas together. Uh, we presented, shared to both Sean and... Uh, 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 Lindsay about um, uh, four ideas, which was a cut down from I think the original ten or so that we that the team came up with. And then we always like to cut down to stuff we, only stuff we would like to produce. And then after that meeting, uh, cut it down to two ideas, which were in I believe a packet that was shared with you, a uh, PDF of uh, of of the directions. So uh, you know one of those directions, both actually I'll, I'll step back. Both of those directions, uh, we, we kind of you know, strategically wanted to be mindful of the value proposition that had been framed earlier this year in the work that uh, Sean mentioned, which was, and I'm reading this, so uh, downtown Royal Oak is a vibrant community where residents and visitors come together for entertaining and meaningful experiences. Uh, but we also were mindful in a post-COVID or, or, or still COVID environment that uh, maybe, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we had to have a, a gentle touch with that in terms of how we, you know, we don't want to talk about too much coming together, uh, the right kind of coming together, the healthy kind of coming together. Uh, uh, so not about crowds and stuff like that. Uh, but also we, we, we explored a range of, of urgency, you know, how much, you know, knowing that a lot of businesses have been shut down or in partial business or working off, you know, in curbside that, you know, could we bring some urgency in there? And we explored a range of, 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 of what we call call to action. You know, uh, you know, act now kind of uh, kind of stuff, and so where we ended up with all this was was two campaigns. One campaign was what we called, you know, it's with the, the hook was our home, and visually this would be based on uh, <coughs> uh, portrait photography of uh, downtown uh, business owners, managers, staff, you know, a variety of people showing you know the full diversity of types of businesses and. And types of people here in downtown and 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 we're all familiar with seeing stuff with like with the open sign you know, that's become a big thing and and it's already a cliche but instead having them uh, hold signs up about this is kind of what we offer here so it's not like we don't you know it's not if say we're uh, i was like we're, we're the yoga studio we, you know we offer yoga yes but what we really offer is serenity you know, or it's, it's, there's a whole bunch of different ways of framing, you know, if, if, we're, if I'm going to, uh, 
a, a dessert oasis, you know, that's, that's indulgence, that's treating yourself. And so we would work with the, uh, we would, that would be a series of shots of those probably in a, in a 30 second commercial, probably about 13 or 14 of those, something like that, uh, give or take, uh, we, we, but we'd shoot about 30 of them. So we'd have uh, plenty to use in uh, cross social media and billboards. Uh, and we'd have a, a pool that we could go back to if we decided to do another uh, TV commercial. And then we would work with the, uh, uh, those businesses to say, okay, let's, what's, what's on that sign? And this would all be done with still photography, uh, but it would be, we could, you know, take that out of, uh, uh, make, make moving video out of that. Uh, you know, a true com TV commercial online video we could use it for. And there's a reason for that. One is we wanted the dignity and the, the kind of the real gravitas of portraiture. And two is a uh, uh, cost and time. Uh, it's a lot easier to get that done fast and really well, uh, uh, quicker uh, uh, than, it, than it is dragging uh, 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 a, a, a really high-end uh, uh, video crew around and, and get the same effect. It's, it's something that's been on my mind for the last couple of years. With, we, we've done work with uh, you know, you know, a series of, of uh, small budget, uh, production budget clients, and it's been on my mind that this is a great technique for that kind of situation. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and it, it, it can be much more uh, cost effective than doing full video and yet still look really good. And I think you may have noticed some, it's actually, that's been a little kind of mini genre of advertising that, uh, that you used to see every now and again, but in the last three months, I've seen a handful of those out there because it's something that in this kind of environment, you don't need to bring five people around, you know, all setting up lights and all that stuff. You can have a couple of people go and, and, and do the shooting and it could look really, really beautiful. And so, you know, that, 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 that would be the basis for a TV commercial. That would be the basis for billboards. That would be the basis for, uh, you know, uh, uh, social media posts, uh, banner ads on websites, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and, and we'd also probably recommend doing a radio commercial to go with that. Uh, we love radio as a medium. And, uh, and so there'd be a little package of stuff. It'd be very different than we did, did a few years ago where we were trying to showcase the, the, the wide diversity of, of what you can do in Royal Oak. We would still want to capture that, but that was the message. It's, you know, there's all these things you can do in Royal Oak. Here we want to talk about you know, the human connection of this kind of place, this kind of environment with the people who, who are here and call it home and the people who come to visit. There is a bond there that we want to uh, make sure we're emphasizing and that the people who are uh, part of this downtown Royal Oak community uh, are, are inviting people back in. So that was idea one. We call it our home. There's a line at the end. So make yourself at home here in our home is it would be the, the end, uh, end line on that commercial. And the uh, uh, second approach was uh, well, you know, you know, what's the big word that, that people have been talking about business is getting back in business. It's, it's time to open up again. And we had this idea of what if for a few months we, we changed the, the branding on Royal Oak to Royal Open and, 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 and have that mean two, two levels, not just, <coughs> excuse me, that we're open, but that openness has been for years what this city has been about. You know, you come here because you're open to new experiences, new tastes, new restaurants, new, new stores, new ideas, new people, new things, new experiences. And what we would do with this one also shot with that still photography, but these would be candid. This would be like documentary journalism style, beautiful shots in the moment, uh, authentic, candid shots. And we would do that by taking about four or five days of just massive coverage, morning, noon, evening, of what goes on in downtown Royal Oak with, uh, you know, have a couple of camera people and a, somebody grabbing uh, talent releases uh, and, uh, and then editing that again into a TV commercial and using that as a basis for, uh, 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 for uh, 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 you know, billboards and banner ads and social media posts and all that, that, that kind of stuff. And so the theme here would be that this is a place that, you know, it's that one level of we're open, but we've always been about being open to new ideas. And so let's let's have that two level of meaning. And and at the end, you know, uh, we're Royal Oak and we're open for you, you know, and, and this is the kind of place you go when you're open to new things and new ideas and, and kind of celebrate not only who we are as an identity, but as, as a brand, but also what our experience is. So we've had those two uh, uh, kind of directions were out of uh, the original 10 or 12 that we, we came up with, uh, the four we presented to Sean and, uh, and Lindsay, and, and uh, that's where we're at right now. And I guess if we were going to move forward with one, we'd need to pick one and, 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 and move forward. Okay. Director London. Just when I say I love it, I'm always a big fan of your work. Thank you. Spot on. Good. 
Uh, Director Riley. Yeah, um, um, Mark, I'm looking through these um, and, and I like them both. And, and one thing I really like about Royal Open right now with what's going on socially and culturally in our country, I think this really says a lot about what we are as a community. Um, I think that is, it's got several um, entendres, if you will. Um, and and I, 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 I like them both. Well, my one question is uh, the, the, the runway, is that, is that a fashion runway? I'm, I'm, I'm stupid when it comes to some of this stuff. Your, your runway, is that a fashion runway? Yeah, that's the idea that would, that would be, uh, uh, you'd be one of the, one of the uh, uh, clothing stores. Uh, okay. that, that's what it is. It's a clothing stores, but it's your runway or it's your great, wonderful walk-in closet or whatever, however you want to phrase that. We would work, if we did that campaign, we would work with the individual businesses to frame what exactly are we saying about that versus just assigning it to them. Uh, but we'd want it to have that kind of lift. It's not just, this is your place for clothing. It's it's something bigger than that, you know, and uh, and something more meaningful and more personal than that. So uh, 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 we think that could be uh, you know, very engaging. We like both uh, uh, campaigns a lot. Otherwise, we wouldn't have uh, uh, shared them. Uh, I will say my personal bias is to Royal Open because I think you, that could be T-shirts and that could be, you know, decals and that could be big window clings on people's stores. It's the banner across Main Street. Uh, there's a lot we could do with that uh, you know, pretty darn quick. And uh, also, I think that that one is, is we can be a little faster with that one. Some of that we can probably have some outdoor and some, some, some banners and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, you know, pretty in like the next week or so, because you know, just just looking at what the photography we have right now on hand that we shot a couple of years ago, what we is there any of that stuff we can recycle? And uh, and and also, I think what we'd be looking for is at the end of that, we'd have that uh, uh, we'd animate the, the 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 change from Royal Oak to Royal Open at the end of the TV commercial, and then use that in you know social media posts, what have you. And so there's a lot we, but we love both directions. I think the, the our home is very warm. Uh, and not that the Royal Open isn't uh, very warm. Uh, uh, Royal Open has a great hook. That's what we like about it. It's, it's, it's a nice thing to hang your hat on for a, a few months. Okay, uh, Director okay. Rossback, and then I'll come back to you, Laura. Director Rossback. Unmuted. You're muted. Jennifer, you're muted. Uh, Mark, I haven't had a chance to meet you, but uh, I love the Royal Open. I think it's a great uh, moniker to it's very poignant for right now. Um, I would I would want to caution that we should show because we are so open, we should be showing a lot of uh, diversity in the businesses that we show if we go that route. Um, minority owned, even culturally, uh, I think we have a lot of that diversity in downtown that we could uh, showcase. So um, I, I think that's a great, uh, a great way to get people interested in downtown. That, that we agree completely. That's why we want to do just so much just coverage. Just go out and cover, cover, shoot, 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 and make sure we're covering as much as we possibly can. That way, we have the, the nice resources for you know diversity of business type, diversity of people, diversity of experience. You know, so it's not just you know restaurants and stores, but it's you know you know it'd be not, it, it's probably a little early to be able to get any live entertainment venue, sadly. But as things open up, uh, uh, you know, uh, as, as yeah, I, you know, if if I, you know, I, okay. I don't know for this because uh, I have no pertinence to this, but if, if hair salons are opening up, uh, we'd want to be able to get that too because there's such a wonderful variety of things. And uh, we just want this to look like this is a great crossroads. And I'm going to add as a personal note uh, for both of these are very personal for me because this uh, uh, seven years ago this week on Monday, we opened our doors here. And, and, and these feelings are uh, both these campaigns are very much about why we chose downtown Royal Oak for our, our agency. It was, it was this kind of vibe is, is the place we wanted to be. Okay. Director London. You know, to be consistent across our different media platforms, it'd be nice in our community publishing contract that we could maybe use some of those taglines and logos, but I'm not sure we're, we're able to. Well, you'd certainly be able to use uh, uh, no, Royal Oak, you could, yeah, whatever, whichever pathway we go, because it'll be one or the other. You, you own the, that, that, that creative. Uh, our thought would be anything we can start putting that Royal Open logo on, well, let's put that on. You know, that, that it's, I think it's the best logo of the Southeast Michigan communities. It's probably the most widely known. It's got that RO alone gives the name across and then the pun uh, gives you something new and fresh to look at. But uh, our feeling would be let's, let's use that as broadly and aggressively as we possibly can for, uh, you know, as long as we can. Okay. Lindsay, did you want to 
jump in here? Yeah, hi, thanks. Um, I agree, both of these campaigns are awesome. Um, Sean and I spent quite a bit of time talking about this after the fact, and I just wanted to provide another perspective. I think the Royal Open campaign is definitely sexy, um, which is great. Um, one consideration, um, just one like hesitancy that I have with it is that if we get into an environment where we start closing again, then these ads won't be relevant anymore. Um, we don't know what's gonna happen with the pandemic. So that could be a sticky situation. Um, and Sean and I really liked with the home campaign, the business owners holding up the signs. We felt that was a really deep way to engage the business owners. Um, so those are just two considerations. I mean, there's a risk with anything you do. There's, we don't have a crystal ball, but I thought it was good to just kind of throw that out there as you guys were thinking about the options. Good. Thanks. Director Riley. Yeah. Real, real quick, Lindsay. Um, I agree with the shutdown, but the only the, the thing I would say about that is that if we have to go back into that, we're pulling everything anyway. So, I mean, if we have to go into a second shutdown, all bets are off at that point on everything. So, and, and, and I would hate to say it, but, but then when we came back out, it would be open again. Um, I went through and I looked at the pictures. I do think the sign holding is kind of cool. And I guess, let me ask you this, is there something you could do to combine both of them? I mean, Royal Open, with, with people holding the signs. I'm, I'm not saying that's, you know, Mark, you're the creative genius. I'm well, uh, let me tell you, actually, uh, uh, that was a question that uh, Sean and Lindsay had uh, when we last met. And, and, and I'll tell you this, all ad agency people when asked that immediately say no. And uh, because not, not just out of, out of professional pride or, or obstinacy, but usually because there are different underpinnings of two different campaigns and just you know shoving them together doesn't always work but we actually went back and we looked and we feel we have something that does do that uh it, it uses the signs it uses the royal open uh you know things had to go uh, the sign how we use the signs changed a little bit so the, the our home is your blank is no longer would no longer be able to be it's it is and we actually had shared this with uh, uh sean and uh and so he could you know we could share that with you uh it was it would be like you know, uh, uh, Royal open to indulgence. And then it would be the sign saying indulgence, you know, right. and it would be because we'd want to you still use that Royal open very aggressively. If, if, if it's just a tagline at the end, there's no point in using it, but if it's out there and, you know, very, very, very boldly stated, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 it serves its purpose of being a big fat hook to hang things on, uh, you know, I guess it'd be up to other people whether, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, whether they would like that uh, merger. We've got, uh, uh, like I said, uh, we could look at that. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, we, we went and redid the script and we looked at uh, how we would treat the outdoor and, and all the other static media. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, part of me always likes to keep, you know, the purity of the original idea, but we'd be open to it. Okay. Uh, let me go to Director Roswick first. I was going to say, Matt, you're asking a a creative to uh, merge two babies together into one. <laughs> but I'm um, a Neanderthal. Don't don't listen. To me. <laughs> but what I I think uh, Mark did. I mean, I think Mark, you said something really interesting there in the fact that uh, the Royal Open, the the strength of that is really that logo, and so beyond that what people do with that almost has its own it can get embodied in a different way than even what we're imagining it to be so if we if we allow um some of that risk to go out and and allow people to use it uh, allow some of the businesses to use it into their social media and things like that i mean we might see some things that we didn't even imagine which could be pretty awesome mm -hmm. Director London? I just want to say, regarding the two campaigns, <clears throat> I, I love them both. I tend to like our home a little bit better for um, Lindsay's concerns about it be closed. But unlike Matt, I think if we get shut down again in the fall or winter, we've all, businesses have adapted and have pivoted, so we won't be closed in the, quite the same sense. You know, I would still do curbside, restaurants would just do carry out. I mean, there'd be some rest, some things like, <clears throat> yeah. gyms or their yoga studios that can't be open but a lot of people 
we learned a lot about how to survive the shutdown. Yeah. For sure. Can I, can I get, get, kind of add to that, which is, you know, our, our you know, uh, two of the client, our two active clients that we've, you know, the biggest clients that we've worked with over the last, uh, over the COVID period, are our bank client, which is a large bank down in the uh, uh, southeast part of the country, and and also the Huron Clinton Metro Parks. And I have to say, the, the 12 weeks of the shutdown, uh, every week, it was something new, something different, something, a rule changed, a policy changed, this changed, that changed. And, and I think that's going to be, you know, we, we're, we're, we're probably going to be lucky to have a nice three, four months of stability, uh, make hay while the sun shines, and then, uh, then, then adapt when we see what the, you know, if, if conditions change, adapt to that. And I think everyone's got to be, you know, whatever route we go. Uh, it's still going to, you know, if it, if it gets, if there's a big new spike in November around there, then everybody's going to have to adapt anyways. We're going to have to, you know, look at what, what, what's being said and how do you change that? And, uh, you know, one way or other, either change it a lot, or change it a little. Okay. So we do have a proposed uh, resolution before us. Uh, Director Sophia is, or Chairman Sophia, is, is the resolution for the dollars or for the dollars and which of the programs we're going with? Or are we just going to leave that up to um, the Siren, Sean, Consumer Marketing? What are we going to do there? Um, Sean, Sean, what's your intention? Um, are you asking about, uh, in terms of the resolution, the dollar amount to be approved? Yeah. Or, I'm, I'm asking, are we are, are we voting only on the dollar amount, or are we trying to decide the direction of the campaign, or are we leaving that up to others? I'm fine either way. I mean, I guess that determined that I guess that depends on how the resolution is going to be framed. Um, so we have, as it's written, um, it kind of leaves it open, okay. uh, because we wanted to show the board, you know what those two campaigns so that they could provide some insight. So really the, how the resolution was written, it left it open in terms of which campaign, um, but it, it had that dollar amount in it, so. Okay. All right. and, and another quick question, because I don't want to make any more difficult. Is, 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 is Mark and, and Sean and Sarah, is, is everybody's intention to, get to work on these ASAP? In other words, tomorrow or? Well, we would, uh, uh, the goal would be to start working, uh, but that would be, you know, contingent on, are we doing our home? Are we doing Royal Open? Or are we doing a, a merger of the two? Um, so, uh, so that a lot would depend on that. Uh, you know, we, we could begin doing the, the photo coverage for Royal Open as early as next week. Uh, we might, you know, try to you know, get it all in, but it might end up being the uh, wrapped around the 4th of July uh, period, uh, just because of getting all the players we need involved. Uh, but, uh, 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 and certainly, uh, the, the, our home one would probably be in that period of early, early July, uh, for, for going out and doing our shooting, uh, because that would just take work to set up all those portrait sessions, uh, and, and, and arrange all those businesses. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, you know when we get started it would de it depend on, uh, uh, which path we're going down. Okay, so Mark, you are looking for a little bit of direction, then, correct? It, well, uh, sooner or later, uh, uh, yeah, I hear what you're saying about you—you you, you can approve uh, the the project and then figure out which creative direction and you know how you do that is, I guess, up to you. Uh, but uh, yeah, we can't do anything until we know: are we doing our home? Are we doing uh, Royal Open? Are we doing the merger of the two? So I, mm -hmm. I guess the reason why this was uh, kind of phrased as open as it was is because we just wanted to make sure that we wouldn't have to take something back to the board again in July, which would potentially slow us down. And then we Correct. wouldn't get ads out until the end of the summer. So we tried to make sure that we got everything that we would need approved, approved at this meeting. Okay. Um, Matt, go ahead. And then I'm going to make yeah, a recommendation here. The, 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 we, we, we approve uh, the, 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 the funds now and that, that later this week, if possible, or first of next week at the Consumer Marketing Committee, just whether they get together on a phone call or whatever and, and, and hash this out and come up with a recommendation with, 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 with Sean and Siren involved as well. Yeah, I, I, I actually was going to say the same thing and I'm, I'm comfortable with having uh, Sean and Lindsay and Mark work together in terms of moving the best project forward. Um, and the Consumer Marketing Committee can be involved in that also, sure. you know, given the time frame. We certainly don't want to have to push this back till next month's meeting. Um, so if if everybody is okay with that, 
I would say we just go with the resolution in terms of approving the funds and direct staff to follow through with the programs um, as, as they see fit. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Y yes, I'm, I'm fine with that plan also, but I, I just would like to state for the record that there is some live music left in Royal Oak. I know Fifth Avenue has live acoustic music on Tuesdays. Uh, there's dueling pianos available on the weekends at 526 Main, and I think Oak City Grill has uh, live music on certain nights too. So there, there, is, uh, there is some live music still kicking and screaming here in Royal Oak. And the, and the Mori is opening uh, June 25th as well with live music. All of that is great news. Thank you. Yep. Okay, I will move to approve uh, what we got there, the, the 35 to 15, 50. I'll okay. second it. Okay, motion by Director Riley, second by Director London. Any further discussion on this? Okay, I'm gonna do a roll call vote. Uh, Director Riley? Yes. Director London? Yes. Director Brake? Yes. Director Rossman? Yes. Director Yesvik? Yes. And I will vote yes. Any nays? None. And that motion passes. Okay, so we'll move directly into uh, item number nine, then the advertisement placement for factory ads. Sean? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so this uh, resolution is actually linked to the previous uh, project in that. Uh, if we got approval to have these ads made, we wanted to make sure that we could get them out into circulation as quickly as possible without having, again, to take something back to the board in July. Um, you know, and as, as the board may be aware, if there's any agreement that the DDA signs with anybody, that has to be approved by the board. So we wanted to get at least something out of the way quickly. Uh, and so what is before you now, and I believe uh, the executive director shared what I passed on earlier today that further outlined uh, the proposal that we got from Comcast would be a uh, $30,000 90-day campaign with Comcast and a $20,000 campaign uh, with Outfront Media for billboards and a $10,000, uh, uh, I guess, allocation for social media advertising. And that would be for this, this Royal Open uh, or Royal Oak Home campaign. Um, so th these would be the, the main areas where we would be sending out a lot of these ads. Um, I think I should note that, you know, because it's a 90 day campaign, if there's additional, you know, advice that we get down the road, maybe by next month of where we can also advertise these, you know, I, I think that could also be considered potentially by the consumer marketing committee. Uh, but we, we wanted to put something together very quickly that we could get these ads out into circulation as soon as they're produced, rather than having to wait toward the end of the summer. So um, okay. with that in mind, that was kind of the spirit uh, behind this. With that in mind, uh, it, uh, it's proposed to be taken out of the $200,000 uh, media placement fund in the promotions budget. And there is a resolution prepared for the uh, DDA's consideration. Okay. So the resolution that I'm looking at right now um, um, states the agreement with Siren. So um, if that is accurate, then uh, Lindsay, did you want to weigh in on this at all? Or oh, I would say that that's a typo in this in this cover letter. <laughs> Gonna say. Uh, I, I wasn't sure. Uh, that's why I, I was trying to. That, that is the incorrect resolution on that cover letter. How many, how, how many of those uh, did you type up in one night, Sean? <laughs> I did mention I, I wrote a lot of cover letters this last week, so I do apologize for that. So then, Sean, just briefly clarify again for us. So this is just a, uh, an allocation of the, of the funds that were part of the $200,000 uh, budget, uh, directing them to go into these specific categories. Uh, correct. So that would be a... A thirty thousand dollar ninety day campaign with Comcast, a twenty thousand dollar ninety day campaign with Outfront for the billboards, and then a ten thousand uh, dollar fund for social media to advertise, you know, our 
uh, those factory ads uh, for those 90 days. Uh, so okay. that comes to a total of sixty thousand uh, dollars. You know, alloc allocated from the the two hundred thousand dollar media placement fund, okay. um, and you know, subject to any revisions by the city attorney and authorizes the executive director to okay. execute any agreements. Okay, I think we got. I think we. That's good clarification. Thank you, Director Ross back. You're on, uh, you're muted again, Jenny. Still muted. There you go. So, um, on the Comcast, uh, I see we're we're targeting young solos and then families with children. Um, was there any consideration to possibly targeting uh, dual income, no kids, um, a household or a household with, uh, um, uh, I want to say empty nesters more so than the kids, uh, families, <laughs> the, the household with families. Uh, my reasoning is, you know, during this pandemic, there's not a lot of people coming in and out of a house for for babysitting and things like that. So if we want people to come in and enjoy themselves, chances of them having someone watch kids is probably not high in some cases. John? Uh, yeah, I can address that. Um, sure. So the kind of the, the guiding star on this when, you know, I was you know requesting that they put together some sort of materials to target the audience is, is that we were operating under the assumption that, you know, Siren's uh, advice that they had given to us about our target audiences being, you know, young millennials uh, that frequent, you know, the entertainment amenities down here, and then young families who are moving mm -hmm. to a lot of the neighborhoods, you know, buying new houses, have young children. Uh, so because those were the two established target audiences that were, you know, approved you know, in the uh, materials provided by Siren by the board, you know, I decided to move forward with those two demographics as kind of like our foundation here. Okay, I guess I'm, I, I see you trying to target not just our own, our own community, but the surrounding communities. And I would think that we'd want to just target, you know, more of that uh, middle age, maybe they just got out of high school and are going to college. Uh, and so, you know, empty nesters. Um, just in, in, in relation to what's going on today, um, I'm not seeing a lot of families and I, I have kids myself. They're not, not a lot of people wanna go out right now, maybe in a couple months, but right now they're, they're sticking pretty closely to home. So, um, I'm just thinking that might not be the right target for this 90 day um, piece. So that's, that's my thoughts. And then I know we're not spending a lot of money, but was there any added value um, negotiated into this with Comcast? So we have uh, a Comcast uh, point of contact, Jenna Lapriz, who we've been dealing with over the past year. And she's been very good about uh, including bonus spots for us and, and constantly working with us. So uh, she she worked with us to, to discount a lot of things for us in the past. And uh, she she was very accessible uh, in terms of putting together something, you know, very quickly uh, to get uh, before the board this time. So, uh, yeah, there was definitely some added value. She's constantly working with us to add some additional spots here and there. Okay, uh, Lindsay, you're, you're muted. There you go. Yeah, just to Jenny's point, um, I hear you. I, I, and I agree that um, I, as a mom with young kids, I don't think that people are racing out to restaurants, bringing their children in tow or, you know, going on a lot of date nights right now. Um, for social media advertising, I think we can definitely target empty nesters and you know people 50 and over on Facebook. Um, that's a really popular platform for that. So I and and ten thousand dollars will get us pretty far over social media. Good, Director Riley. 
the one, the one thing I'll say, and 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 I agree um, part, partially with, with what Jennifer said. Uh, I was in I, I, uh, yesterday afternoon. I was in Birmingham and here in Royal Oak, and there were groups of young kids, not 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 you know people like little kids, like, like everywhere. I mean, it was like you know it was like summer when we when we were younger. One thing that I said in the beginning, uh, when we first put together the relief and recovery programs, was that you know I think I, you heard me say that you know there's always opportunity in crisis. And I think it's really coming home to roost that this is, we have a unique opportunity right now in, in, in downtown Royal Oak um, with everything going on. Um, I've been downtown Detroit probably four or five times in the last couple of weeks. And it's tough down there because the workers aren't back. Um, so there is, there's no support for retail or for the restaurants. Uh, also, they've got a lot of small, like, you know, 40, 50 seat restaurants that can't operate at 50% capacity because it, you know, if you're 20 and 25 seats at ball game, it doesn't work. Um, so, and, and again, the big thing is that the office workers, I have a buddy whose bar is, lives and dies uh, with Quicken Loans uh, at, from the Free Press building there. And they're not back. He has zero lunch crowd. I mean, I was in there last night there. The other night there were four or five people in the place. So <clears throat> people are coming out. People are um, not, not in droves. It's actually, uh, I find, I have found it very pleasant around here. Um, most evenings, it really, really is. And I'm, um, it's really kind of neat to see the restaurants are crowded at 50%. I mean, people are shopping, Lori, by you. I mean, every, every day I ride my bike by there, there's a line of people outside of Proving Grounds Coffee, you know, at, at their takeout window. And I think, I think we're going to get uh, a bigger share of the pie. And so this is a great opportunity for us. Okay, Director London. I just want to add to that the hair salons being open is yeah. huge for us. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The women and yep. so the, the office workers is an is a next component. But I don't think they're coming back anytime soon. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no. I, I wouldn't think till next year, till January. I, I will say I think we're gonna have to think about the traffic cycle a little differently, especially for office workers. I, I don't see any company coming back to a traditional workforce similarly to what they had prior to this right. so that's one good thing about the park being henry ford people do go to the doctors not as much but yeah. that will be people. exactly yeah that's good like point. Gee, we're so lucky that we have them <laughs> well, well well imagine imagine if that had been leased out for a business that now decided that they're, they're you know, like, 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 like I said, the, the, the last guy I'd want to be is a big uh, commercial real estate guy in Manhattan. I mean, I can't imagine all the space. All right, we're lucky. You're right. Okay, yeah. so what I'm looking for here is a motion that states um, uh, to approve the, the placement of those funds and to direct staff to implement those programs. I, uh, I'll make the motion. I'll make the motion to approve the, uh, the placements uh, and and direct staff to uh, do so. Okay. Motion by Director Rossman. Support. Supported by Director Riley. Are we clear on that? Everybody good on that? Okay. Uh, I'm going to do a roll call vote then. Um, Director Rossman. Yes. Director Riley. Yes. Director Bright. Yes. Director London? Yes. Director Yasmin? Yes. And I will vote yes. Okay, uh, that motion passes. Okay, so moving right along then, um, item number 10, consumer facing newsletter management. Sean, is this you also? Yes, it is, Mr. Chair. Good. This one does have the correct resolution attached. <laughs> So thank That's you. That's okay. You did a lot of them at one time. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess I'll begin on this one that for the longest time, the DDA has communicated to its stakeholders in the district, uh, the businesses, the property owners, the residents that live in the district uh, via email. You know, we send out regular emails, you know, promoting certain events, uh, letting them know when streets will be closed. Uh, advertising programs such as like the Rebound Royal Oak program. And so far it's been a really good way to get in touch with our stakeholders in downtown. Uh, one thing that we haven't really had, but I've always wanted to, to work to develop 
is a consumer facing email blast uh, to promote downtown shopping, dining, and entertainment. Uh, now the city has a lot of versions of this. It's primarily designed for residents, um, but nothing really targeted at consumers on a regional level. Um, and so what you know, this is proposing that the Business Marketing Committee is recommending is that we work with Siren PR uh, and they will help us establish a consumer facing kind of e-blast regular newsletter uh, that will be targeted at regional consumers, not just specifically to Royal Oak, uh, where we can advertise, you know, the shopping, the dining, the entertainment amenities in downtown. Um, we're also looking at this uh, to be the primary vehicle to send out information and the e-cards for the buy local campaign. So uh, I've been working with Siren PR to come up with numerous avenues to get that buy local campaign out, uh, you know, into the ether to, to get it into people's hands. And I think that this might be a really good way to do that. Um, so we can ha use our advertising, such as the podcast, to drive people to the sign up page for this newsletter. We can establish, you know, a URL with a splash page where people can sign up. Uh, we'll also be able to get, you know, their email, uh, you know, their zip code, things like that, too. So we can find out where primarily the people that are coming into downtown are, are living and coming from. Uh, so I think uh, there's a lot of opportunity here. We can use it as a way to just let people know quickly about, you know, events that we'd like them to know about, about, you know, weekly deals that a business might have. Um, I think one of the daunting tasks about this was just managing the inflow of just all the information from all the businesses to try to organize it and get it out in a timely manner. And I think that's, that's why I think it's important that we work with Siren PR that has the capacity, the staff capacity to, to assist us in, in doing this. Um, okay. So attached to this uh, is a quote that Siren has uh, proposed. Uh, the estimated cost of management for this newsletter would be uh, $2,450 per month. This would be an ongoing basis. Uh, in addition to this, Siren has offered to manage social media advertising for the newsletter at $750 per month. And they would rely on, you know, Instagram, and Facebook, and Twitter to really drive signups for this. And so, uh, you know, this, this would be, you know, kind of a, a mass campaign to get people to sign up for this. You know, when they sign up, we'd get them the, the e-card. We could connect them with ride sharing, uh, Uber vouchers, and uh, Lyft codes as well. Uh, so it could be like a primary artery to get people into downtown. Um, and uh, should the DDA concur with this recommendation, uh, there's an attached resolution uh, to approve the agreement uh, with Siren PR regarding the downtown newsletter and social media advertising, uh, of course, subject to any revisions by the city attorney and authorizes the executive director to execute the agreement. Okay. Discussion. Director Rosbeck. I think, uh, Lindsay and Sean, this is a great idea, especially for neighborhoods like mine that are very north of the city, almost closer to downtown Birmingham. So I, I think um, if you could target some of those neighborhood associations um, yeah. with your targeting, I think this could be a home run. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll go to Director Riley first. Yeah, real quick. Um, just just uh, uh, the first year of this for the um, the, the twenty four fifty monthly fee that'll come out of the rebound budget, and then Tim, I would assume that for for future years we'll just have a separate line item for the newsletter in in, in, in the budget in the twenty one twenty two budget. Does that make sense? Uh, sure, the board will decide that at the time you do those budgets. Okay. 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 And then and then. Um, um, the other thing that, that I was going to say, just just a question for Lindsay, Sean, Jen, anybody, anybody. Again, I'm a Neanderthal, so I'm sorry. Do we have any thoughts down the road that maybe we let people not necessarily like advertise with us, but maybe like uh, people put coupons in the on the back, pay, you know, t sales or something like that, where where we give them a great rate for them to get a, something out to somebody? Does that make sense, or am I just trying to pollute the waters here? You're smiling, Lindsay, so. I'm being an idiot. Go no, ahead. you're not an Ian Rathal, Matt. Come on. Um, <laughs> no, good question. You know, I think that that's not a core focus right now. Once we get it up and running, I think we can consider the evolution of it that way. Um, but for right now, we do plan on um, having a, a 
portal or a system for businesses to submit stories, awesome. um, just editorially, not paid placement, um, which I think will go a long way in developing the relationships more with the business owners. Yeah, no, and I don't, I don't want to garbage it up with a bunch of ads or anything like that. I was just wondering. Okay. I was going to say, Matt, you're you're asking for a lot of management of something that could get very <laughs> get very conflated. Right, Director London. My question was the seven hundred fifty dollars you're spending on social media. Is that seven hundred fifty dollars for ads or for your management of the ads? Both. Oh. So that's creative direction and um, targeted uh, placement of the ads, so that we're monitoring their performance and adjusting accordingly on an ongoing basis. It just seems like a lot of money for. I mean, I do place Facebook ads. That's a lot for a face. That's a lot of in a budget. Well, and initially to get people to sign up. But you think over time and a period of years that budget should go down. Well, and I was telling Sean, um, you know, it's likely, especially because, you know, we were also talking about advertising the buy local program and reopening over social media. And so we don't have any social media at advertising activated in our scope right now. So this is like getting it going. And that's kind of why the initial, because there's management of the system on the back end that needs to start. But once we do mm -hmm. that, adding on to the scope will become more efficient. I get it. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just want to say, I really like this idea. Um, uh, I've seen other uh, businesses and stuff use these e-blasts and um, it is very adaptable. You can really do so many things with it. One of my goals when I came out of the DEA was to, to reach out farther and to let the people know what was happening. Uh, I, like Jennifer, I'm on the north end of the city, and there was times where I wasn't getting information as to what was happening in the downtown. But, I mean, it, this, this can encompass so much in terms of events or any new business that comes into town. We can do a feature on them. Um, there's so many different things that we can do with this. I, I really... Um, I really like this idea. I know the chamber uses it as a, a very effective mem uh, means of communicating with their members um, on a regular basis and getting information out to their members. Uh, the chamber's actually helped us in when we've done street closures. Um, they've gotten that information to their members, you know, through those types of avenues. So I, I think this is this is. This is a no-brainer. I think this is really good, and we can be really reach a lot of people with this. Sean, uh, I think uh, that's a great point too. And, and to add on that, you know, we also have that agreement with Screw, who will be putting together uh, small vignettes uh, and longer videos too. So uh, whether it's more efficient to embed the video itself in the email or have a link to view the video. I think, I think we could engage a lot of people that way uh, to see that content. Good, okay. Um, so there is a suggested resolution before you. I uh, make a motion to, yep, I make the motion to accept the, uh, okay. the plan and uh, the contract with Saren. Great. Okay. Uh, motion by Director Rossman. I'll second that. Second, second by Director London. Any further discussion on this item? If not, roll call vote. Uh, Director Rossman. Yes. Director London. Yes. Director Brake. Yes. Director Riley. Yes. And I will vote yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Director Yesbeck. I almost forgot you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, uh, I'm thinking about not responding because of that, but okay, yes. <laughs> I am so sorry. Did I get your vote? Have we started to go for yes. Tony's laptop? Okay, okay. Uh, so uh, seeing no nays, uh, uh, that motion will pass. Um, and we're moving on to item number 11, uh, Yifty Community Cards for Buy Local Campaign. Sean, can you start us out with this one? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, DDA may recall that it approved the establishment of a buy local campaign at the May 6th DDA meeting in the amount of $200,000. And then at the last DDA meeting on May 27th, there was a subsequent resolution uh, that expanded that buy local budget by an additional uh, $200,000. And uh, 
Since that time, uh, the Business Marketing Committee, myself and members of the Siren team have been uh, working with a representative uh, from the company Yifty. Uh, they are a gift card company uh, that a few years ago established a program called the Community Card Program. So, uh, you know, you may be familiar with uh, the concept of downtown dollars uh, that a lot of downtowns throughout, you know, the country have. Uh, well, uh, this community card program takes that uh, downtown dollars program, which was traditionally just paper gift certificates, and it makes it electronic. It uh, eventually started with Dan Gilbert, Dan Gilbert in downtown Detroit, when he started uh purchasing these cards for his employees that they could use at downtown businesses. Uh, also, Birmingham, uh, the principal shopping district in downtown Birmingham has implemented a similar program with the community cards. And I spoke to Ingrid, who's the director over there, uh, about their program and, and how well it went. Um, and you know, she had nothing but great things to say about it. Uh, the advantages of having an e-card program over the paper script is that it's tremendously labor intensive. Uh, to constantly redeem paper script all day. And she was saying that she had some part-time assistants in their downtown office, that it just completely took up their staff capacity to, to cash in these, these paper scripts all day. Uh, but since they moved to the e-card program, although there are some fees to the program, she said that it's a lot more efficient and frees up a lot of their staff capacity as well. Um, so as part of our recovery programs, uh, you know, for the grants, that was more of our relief program. Now we're moving into the phase of recovery. We're trying to get people to you know, reestablish their economic relationship with downtown. And one of the advantages of an e-gift card program such as this is we can have downtown businesses sign up for this uh, e-card program, which means that these cards will only be used at downtown businesses within the downtown district that opt in. Uh, Another advantage of this e-card program is that unlike the paper script, if somebody still feels a little uncomfortable coming down here in person and dining in, they still want to do a curbside pickup or something, they can still use the e-card uh, to call in like a curbside order and they could do it over the phone if they wanted to. And it runs just like a MasterCard. So if a business accepts MasterCards, they can accept this. Um, so as I mentioned, a business would have to opt in. If they opt in, we send Yifty, their email address. Yifty then turns around and sends them via email like an introductory card with a 16-digit card number. Uh, the business would have to run that 16-digit card to register their point-of-sale system into that downtown dollars network. And then after that, uh, anyone who, you, who has an e-card that they want to use at that store, it'll, it'll run just like a MasterCard. There's no fees uh, for any of the businesses to participate. Uh, so moving on to where the DDA wants to go with this is that uh, the Business Marketing Committee is recommending that we load 20,000 cards with $20 and send them out to the region. So we want to use the uh, downtown newsletter. We want to use multiple other uh, avenues to get these out into circulation. We want to approach a lot of the office workers in downtown. And we want to get these cards into people's hands uh, and we expect them to come downtown, you know, either start having lunch down here, having dinner, spending, you know, their money at local shops and whatnot. And the expectation is, is they'll spend more than $20. They won't just come and spend $20 and leave. Uh, this will kind of induce them to spend more. You know, they'll, they'll opt to have dinner down here, possibly spending 75 to a hundred dollars because we gave them 20. Uh, so this is uh, a program that's designed to, uh, help re-engage the public with the businesses down here to help them start to form a relationship. So even if they haven't come down here on a regular basis, now they have a reason to. We're introducing new faces to businesses down here as well. Uh, and so uh, there's a resolution prepared for the DDA's consideration on this. Um, to approve the agreement with YIFTI for the community card program, uh, you know, obviously subject to any revisions by the city attorney, and it authorizes the executive director to execute the agreement. Um, okay. I will add one additional thing. Uh, there was some concern about uh, expiration, that if you have to buy these cards up front uh, and nobody uses them, then you've just wasted $20 on a card that nobody's going to use. Uh, these cards have a 90-day expiration date, so if they're not used, they get refunded to us. Uh, the drawback on this is that Yifty does take a 10% fee of the money that is refunded to us. 
they obviously have operating expenses and that's this is just one of their fees. Um, I'll add one more thing about these fees is that there is a 3% fee for the value loaded onto each card. This is where EFT takes their cut. Um, and that 3% was originally 5%. And then there was originally a $1 charge for every card issue that's been reduced to a 25 cent fee. And that was as a result of the business marketing committee having negotiations with EFD to get those numbers down. Okay. Uh, I'll go to Director Riley first. Yeah. Uh, just a little more background, guys. First of all, uh, thanks to the Consumer Marketing Committee and uh, and uh, Sean, Siren, and Jordan for talking us out of the uh, tone. I know Tony and I were leaning really hard on the script program. Um, you guys, I thank God. I, I went and got my hair cut yesterday uh, at a salon in Birmingham, and I went to tip them, and they're not taking cash. They're, the tips are by Venmo only. So had we created a bunch of script putting around during this pandemic, I don't think that would have gone well. So um, so basically, once, once we decided to change gears and listen to you guys finally and switch it all over to the e-cards, um, Again, the fees were there was 5%. So basically for, for where we were going, they were hitting us with $40,000 fees up front. We negotiated that down to um, uh, 17,000 from 40,000. And then we, 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 I tried to negotiate the 10% restock charge, but they were, they were pretty adamant on holding that one because they have, to, they have to manage the card. They have to provide support for the card throughout its life. In other words, the person has to, can call for con, customer service there. They can check their, what they have left in it, just like any one of us would do with a, with a gift card, so to speak. So that was one of the reasons why we decided to jump it up to $20 instead of 10. One, we get, we get the money out there faster. And we felt, obviously, people will spend are more apt to spend the 20 than to spend the 10 obviously and, and anybody so so any i guess what i'm saying is what doesn't get spent cost is going to cost us 10 percent. that's the bad news the good news is in 90 days it comes back into into our budget and like we were just kind of looking at the timing and we were kind of smiling at, at one another saying this is perfect for some type of a christmas card uh gift card promo whereby the, the we, we want this to be an ongoing relationship with the ft and, and eventually graduate to the point where maybe um, maybe for Christmas, the DDA supports a little bit. In other words, and, and, and ho hoping it, it's from the, um, the, the money that comes back. In other words, if, if all 20,000 go out like we think they will, and 400,000 go out and 50,000 don't get spent, well then 45,000 comes back in after you, if you take the 10%. What we're thinking of at Christmas time, and when we can all think about this, it's like, you know, if you buy a, a, a $50, maybe we add 20% onto every gift card purchase. So somebody buys a $100 gift card, um, it come, they put 100 in, it comes with 120 on it, something like that. The stuff we can think about. Um, again, uh, we like the 90 day expiration date. Uh, we want these to be used and we want them to be used quickly. Um, there's, there's several ways we have to get them out there. Sean may disagree with me on this. I think they're going to go fast. I think, uh, the, the signup is going to go real quick. Once the word starts getting out there, I'm hoping that we use uh, screw to promote both this and the ride share program. Um, and again, this is going to go hand in hand with our idea that, you know, how do we bring people back? Well, let's get them a ride into town and put some money in their pocket that they can always spend here. Um, now, Sean and Siren, you still got to come up with a name uh, for what we're going to call this. Uh, I think you're getting close. Uh, I'm okay with whatever you do. Um, I think that's all I have. So it'll be $20,000, $20 cards. And, and basically, we're going to have to say in, in all our promotions that they're while supplies last. Okay. Director Rosmick. I agree completely with this. Uh, I think this is a great idea. I um, I guess my concern is the 90 days, but I think you want these people to use them, so you do need to put a time frame on them. Right. Um, and, and but in is that is that 90 days from when someone redeems a code or when we redeem the codes with them? So that would be when. So, our, so from when how we buy them. 
yeah, how it was explained to us was that it, whenever the card is issued. So if somebody signs up for the email newsletter in, on July 6th, you know, it'll be 90 days from July 6th when they get that issued card. If somebody does it on July 16th, you know, it'll be 90 days from that period when that card is issued to them. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So, so it's when, so let me, so we're going to, that's what I'm trying to understand. It's not when we purchase them. If we purchase them on July 6th, it's not 90 days since the DDA purchases them. It's when someone signs up for that card. That's how right. I understood it. Matt, do you have a similar understanding or is that uh, when gotta, you send gotta, them the check? I got to be honest with you. I, I didn't ask that question. So <laughs> I, need, I, I, I think we need to understand that one. 90 days. So, uh, okay. but we, we can prepay. So we kind of have a credit with them and then we issue the cards. It's how I understood it. Just don't okay. I would clarify that in the budget. I would clarify that because your 90 days could start when you put the, put the payment in. And yeah. that could be a problem for our, for these. Yeah, sure. But I like the idea. Can you clear that with Donna? Uh, we, we, I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll clarify that. That's I'm, a good question. We'd like it to start when they purchase it, which I don't see any reason why they can't. You know, I mean, we're cause we're, we're funding it, so. Okay. Um, I just want to uh, chime in here real quick. Uh, I want to reiterate what Sean said earlier. This is, uh, to me, this is a really, from a business point of view, this is a really good. Uh, 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 twofold type thing. It's it's a stimulus thing that's going to help uh, our businesses, and it's also an engagement thing. It's also an engagement thing so that we're getting customers to come down to to downtown. Maybe hopefully that a good majority, a lot of those people, maybe new customers. Maybe they haven't experienced just yet, and then it'll be our responsibility to make it a good experience for them. So, uh, from a business point of view, I think it's great. And obviously, from a consumer's point of view, it's it's you know it, it's very nice. Also, um, yeah, I would love to you know go down to dinner and and have twenty dollars to spend you know and and such. So I I think that's a great I I think it's a, a really really good program. I like the idea of it, and um, I think we can move forward. So um, if there's no other discussion regarding this, uh, there is a proposed resolution. The resolution is just approving, I think, the the IFTI, uh, the IFTI contract, right? Correct. With the fees. Okay. I'll move to approve it. Okay. Motion by Director Riley. Second by Director Rosbeck. Okay. Any further discussion on this item? Okay. Roll call vote. Does, Director Riley. Mike, Mike, yes. before you vote, does does the DDA want the agreement to indicate that the ninety day period starts from the customers? Authorization is that what how you want it to read? Uh, we would like it to read that way. We just need to know that that's physically possible, I guess. Yeah, Tim, is that an issue from a budget standpoint? Um, I know. Mm. I mean, I mean, I will. We will know. I, I, I'm assuming that these are going to go fairly quickly within a short amount of time, within a few weeks, three weeks maybe. But who knows? And I guess that could be an issue with you know when. When the expiration date, because we have to keep it in the budget till the expiration date. Well, the, the question would be is if, if that's not possible, perhaps we don't buy them all at the same time. Yeah, perhaps I would agree. Break them up, so, that's a great um, John, I, John. I think, but your intent is what I want to make sure. So when Sean goes back to him, is the DDA is more interested in them having a 90 day period start when the customer gets them somehow. If that's when they sign up, yeah, yeah, if, that's correct. If that's, if that's not possible, then the DDA does not want to acquire them all at one time. Sean, can you handle that with Donna? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll we would have to do her. some. I'll talk some to her first purchasing. thing. I'll talk to her first thing, and we'll yeah. ensure that uh, because if we do have a ninety-day promotional campaign of signing up for the newsletter, and then you get a ninety-day card, then we're really looking at like one hundred and eighty days on in terms of the length of of how this is being managed for their first card, but I'll clear that all up right. tomorrow just to make sure. Uh, and then we'll, we'll adjust accordingly. Okay. I mean, you're looking at if, if this is truly a rolling date, yeah, you're looking at the la latest being potentially six months from now. 
Right. If you can sign up tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. If it doesn't go quick, yeah. And, and I mean, frankly, they can reload these cards when they're done too. You know, they, if they use their twenty bucks and then they want to go back and put another twenty bucks on it and give it to somebody or use it themselves, they would have the ability to do that. So, um, you know, this the life of this could could stretch. You know, this could be a potentially regular program if, if people are routinely reloading and using their cards or buying new ones and sending them as gifts and, and what have you. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, are you good, Tim, then, with that? Yeah, as long as the board's comfortable, I just want to make sure where your position was so that okay. Sean could articulate it, and okay. then we could we could modify the contract yeah. to be specific uh, based on, on the reply. Okay, thank you. Um, so we do have a motion on the table. Uh, I'm going to call for the roll call vote right now. Director Riley? Yes. Director Rosbeck? Yes. Director Bright? Yes. Director London? Yes. Director Yazbek? Yes, sir. And I will vote yes. Okay, uh, the motion passes on that item. Um, moving on, just a couple more here. Uh, item number 12, ride sharing agreement, Uber. Uh, Sean, start with this one, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, at the May 27th DDA board meeting, the board may recall that it passed a resolution allocating $70,000 to a ride sharing promotional subsidy from the Royal Oak Recovery Fund. Um, so before the board this evening are proposed agreements between Uber and the DDA and Lyft in the DDA regarding ride sharing subsidies. Um, I should note that uh, Uber and Lyft have kind of different ways on how they implement their, their promo codes, I guess, for instance, or their subsidies. Uh, for instance, uh, Uber uses Uber vouchers, which are specifically set up between, uh, you know, the DDA and Uber. And the rider has to acquire this voucher beforehand, and then they can cash it in when they schedule uh, a, an Uber ride to downtown Royal Oak. Uh, Lyft, on the other hand, uh, uses a slightly different way. Uh, they rely on a promo code that you use the promo code while you're getting your ride scheduled. So it would ask you if you have a promo code to discount your ride when you're reserving it. So both are able to still do the $10 subsidy in the timeframes that we want them to do. Uh, so functionally, we're going to look, we're looking at the same outcome, just how they employ these are just slightly different. So uh, I will be working with Siren uh, and our advertising partners to make sure that, you know, we're clear about how people can get their Uber vouchers and how they can get their Lyft codes as well. So I just wanted to make that clear for the board, um, you know, just as a, a point of information. Uh, as mentioned before, the ride sharing promotions would offer a $10 uh, discount off any ride coming into downtown Royal Oak on Thursdays and Fridays from 5 p.m. to midnight and Saturdays and Sundays from 10 a.m. to midnight. And uh, if you recall, the 10 a.m. was uh, was there because you know there is a brunch crowd. Royal Oak is known, you know, for its brunch scene. A lot of restaurants do offer that, um, and the DDA would bill, be billed monthly by both companies uh, in amounts based on the use of these services. Uh, I spoke to a representative from Uber yesterday morning. He walked me through a, a dashboard that I would have access to that would be updated in real time, so we would be able to see like who's redeeming these and when, where are they coming from? We'd get a lot of data from this as well, which I think would be helpful. Uh, the agreements would be roughly for 90 days, uh, as with this 90 day promotional campaign that we're doing for the recovery. Um, and as I mentioned, we'll be promoting these services in a variety of ways. Uh, this includes the email newsletter, um, social media, the pod podcast, and the billboards as well. So um, among another, a number of other ways that we get this out. Um, and if the DDA concurs with the recommendation, uh, the following resolution has been prepared, been prepared for its consideration, uh, approving the, ag the agreements with Lyft and Uber, uh, subject to revisions by the city attorney and authorizing the executive director to execute the agreements. If you have had a chance to go through some of the supporting documents, you'll see that there's some forms we have to fill out. Uh, and then there's some you know, highlighted spots that we have to complete in the contract that makes it specific to our um, you know, program that we want, such as the times, the dates, uh, the expiration, you know, how long we want to do this. 
and I'll be working with the city attorney's office to make sure that this is complete and finalized as well. Okay, I saw Director Riley's hand first. Real quick, Sean, uh, this is new to me on the Uber vouchers. Um, is this an is this an easy thing? Is this something you get on your phone? Um, I and and can can somebody get like with the Lyft code? People are anybody anybody can use it whenever they want. In other words, somebody could use it five times a week if they're coming into Royal Oak every day. Will the vouchers work the same way? The vouchers will work the same way. So you can get unlimited vouchers just like you can use the Lyft code unlimited times. Um, so the thing about the lift code is that if you hear it on the radio, if it's read right. in a podcast, use lift code Royal Oak Summer and you get $10 off. Thing is, you have to actually do, you have to jump through a hoop to get the Uber voucher. So you have to sign up for the newsletter and we'll send you a $20 gift card and an Uber voucher, for instance. Uh, that's one potential way to do this. Uh, you can respond to a Facebook ad and then we send you by email the Uber voucher that you can redeem. You're torturing um, people to get this. That's not the point of this. The point of this isn't to make the, make the, make the customer jump through hoops to get this. It's to get it in their hands. They, so, they can easily get it into their hands. It's just the way that Uber does it. That's, that's just their method of, of how they get uh, discounts of this nature into people's hands. They don't operate on the promo code model like Lyft does. So, so my question is, can they, do they, they don't have to go through us to get it, do they? Can they go, can they go somewhere like on Uber and get the voucher or? Yes, yes, that will also be available. I uh, spoke to Gregory Jacobs from Uber yesterday and they even said they could even put it in the app on like the scrolling info tab when you're in the Uber app that can let you know, click here to get your Uber voucher. Um, they even said that they can independently reach out to every Uber user that took a ride to downtown Royal Oak in the last month, Very send them an email and say, click here to get your Uber voucher for your next trip into downtown Royal Oak. So there's a number of ways that we can get this into people's hands. Got it. They're, just, they're just slightly different models on how they get it into people's hands. It's just one more step. So we can say, whether it's podcast advertising, whether it's screw video, whether it's social media, hey, hit this and get your get your card. Yeah. It's it. just it's just kind of the 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 cost of doing business with Uber and, and how they operate. And there are people that specifically use Uber as their their ride sharing service too. So if we want to engage that segment of of their customer base, we would we would have to kind of operate according to how they how they purvey these discounts. Uh, Director Rosbeck. Uh, so just quickly, I mean, this is a, a short period of time that we're going to offer these, or are we? Do we have an unlimited amount of time that we are thinking of operating this, or is this on a budgetary um, exhaustion type model? So, could Sean, you? Can you that's my that? first question. Sure. So is it uh, is it budget? We put so much money towards these, both of them, and they exhaust out. Uh, meaning they get used up and we're done, or are we uh, doing this for a month time frame, two months time frame? Uh, so these agreements would be for an initial 90 days. There are options to extend them as we get closer to that. Um, and there is a budgetary cap on it. So the DDA allocated $70,000 for ride sharing. So if you split that up equally among Uber and Lyft, Uber has 35,000 and Lyft has 35,000 and once that cap is reached, um, if the DDA board wants to allocate additional funds to it, it certainly would have the ability to do that. Okay. Secondly, uh, they're both able to geofence the downtown uh, footprint for the promo code, or are we not doing that anymore? No, we, uh, we would have to in order to have a, like a location for this, because we want people to come to the okay. downtown development district. So. Uh, we found, working with Lyft in the past, we found that if we do a, I believe it was a 0.3 mile radius from the intersection from the of center. 3rd and Main, no. we, can, we can, everything in the Central Business District falls in that radius. Okay. Um, I think that answers all my questions. I, I mean, I... I appreciate this, um, but I would, I mean, I think future aspects, we really need to think about our, our parking lot situation and how do we, how do we incentivize that? Um, but 
I'm okay with this as a as a short term um, opportunity. I think we are going to, Director Rosbeck, just for your knowledge. Uh, I think we will be having some discussions uh, very soon regarding regarding that. Sounds great. Uh, any other discussion here regarding this item? Okay, there is a suggested resolution then uh, before you. I'll move it. Uh, moved by Director Riley. I second. Supported by Director Brake. Okay. Any questions, further discussions at this time? Okay. Seeing none. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Director Riley. Yes. Director Brake. Yes. Director London. Yes. Director Rosbeck. Yes. Director Yesbeck. Yes. And I will vote yes. Seeing no opposition, that motion will pass. Okay, moving right along then. Um, item number 13, parking discussion. I wanna say, Tim, this is you. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll start it. Um, I think the DDA is aware of uh, some of the activity that's been going on with the city. Uh, basically, that downtown parking has been free for several months. Uh, having said that, uh, what I, what I attached to the uh, agenda was simply a flyer that's been out uh, reminding people about parking uh, that's been out for several weeks. Um, what you should also be aware is the police department did start uh, enforcing on-street meters uh, Monday of this week. And the intent is to leave the parking decks as free access until the end of the month. Um, so, so part of the discussion today was to see whether the DDA wanted to provide any funding to continue parking through the month of July to be free. Uh, you may recall that the DDA did that back in for June of 2019, uh, when the 11 mile deck, uh, had its grand opening, uh, the DDA funded free parking in the decks. I believe it was on Thursdays. Uh, Thursdays, Fridays, uh, Saturdays, obviously Sundays are free anyways. Uh, so the question before the city dropped the gates again and started charging on, on the decks at uh, July 1st, uh, we wanted to have you have an opportunity to either decide uh, yay or nay that uh, uh, you wanted to uh, provide funding to have free parking through the month of July. Um, I think just as a background, uh, the, the board provided 100,000, and I'm referencing back to 2019, uh, provided $100,000 in funding to do the free parking in, in June of 2019. Uh, the actual number of uh, uh, costs at that time based on the flat fee rate and the average charge of $2 uh, was approximately about $117,000 is what it costs for those days over the entire month of June in 2019. Uh, in addition to that, you put aside $12,000 to promote the month uh, of free parking. Uh, and you may recall that uh, we purchased a fairly large couple of banners that were hung over the side of the decks and that kind of thing. So um, I believe that banner is still around, uh, or banners are still around, but I I think they have the month of June indicated on them. So we might have to make some changes to those. But um, first question is, uh, is a discussion item is, does the board want to consider providing funding for a free month in July or not? Tim, uh, so just for clarification purposes. So uh, for the 30 days in June of the year 19, you're saying that we reimbursed the city uh, 117,000 for those 30 days? The, the DDA, not for 30 days. It was Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, the other days of the week, Sunday is free all the time anyways, but right. for the other days of the week, uh, there are still charges. The, 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 the DDA simply covered um, those three days 
uh, of, of the week. And the DDA's reimbursement was capped at 100,000 bucks. So that was your contribution to them based on the tickets and the things that were taken and people coming and going, the actual revenue loss or potential loss would have been 170,000. Okay. Um, I just want to remind the board, um, we, we've had a brief discussion about this in the past a, a couple of times. Um, our focus at that time was uh, giving some consideration of possibly doing the month of December uh, during the holiday season. Um, we never came to any conclusion or resolution. I just wanted to remind the board that that has been uh, something that we've discussed at the table in the past. Um, uh, moving forward, I guess, you know, uh, let's, I, well, let's see what we have to say here at the table here first. Director Riley. Um, a couple things. Um, is there, Tim, is there any uh, appetite for the city to jump in on this and maybe split it 50 50, seeing as how we've pretty much put up 2 million already um, for uh, recovery and relief in the downtown? And my second question would be um, I'm assuming that if we did something, it would be based on actual tickets, um, not on history or anything like that, because I noticed, you know, I drive, I ride around a lot. And I noticed there's a lot of spaces empty because, you know, obviously a lot of office workers aren't working. So there's not as many people parking during the days. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump on, on, on the two questions. As okay. far as how, what it would be based on, I would, it would be based on the same way it was done previously was actually a, the number of tickets. There was a report generated from Parkwright of people that came in. They still had to pull a ticket in order to get out, but it was all, uh, free to get out so there would be a uh, an accounting of usage um so that's how the refund or the, the cost would be dealt with in terms of the city uh contributing to it i, I think mr break would, would have input on this as well uh, my reaction would probably be no the city wouldn't be interested uh the city's been providing free parking for uh, since the pandemic started and, and, and have lost significant revenue already in the parking system. Um, I, I, that's kind of my gut reaction to where the city would be, but you know, the commission may feel differently too. Okay. Um, Director Brake, I don't, did you want to comment on this at all or? Uh, I think that was uh, expressed well by uh, um, the uh, executive director Twing. Um, that we're not in the financial position, but um, you know we, we can um, you know run that up the flagpole, as they would say, and, and see what sort of interest. But but if you were to ask me in all honesty, it's we're you know we're looking at other financial losses, and we're just not in that position. So. Okay. Um, okay, uh, Director London. Um. Not that I want to compare myself continually to Birmingham, but they are providing free parking every single day all summer long. Are they really? In, in their decks, not on the street. All summer? All summer. In the decks for the, what, for the remainder of the year, do you think? Yes. Or? Yes. The summer, at least. Sean, do we know what Ann Arbor's doing, just out of curiosity? I don't have information at that time about Ann Arbor. No. I think Birmingham is doing it in part because they have a street closed. But also, you know, you, you want to encourage people not just people shopping the restaurants at night, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but people going to the hair salons, hopefully the yoga studios, the retail shops, and other businesses during the day to use the parking decks. Because mm -hmm. hair salons, you're there two hours. I mean, a woman is. Mm -hmm. here's, here's, an, here's another thought, guys. I know that, that, that uh, people are applying, uh, whether they're, whether they're retail, yoga, whatever, to use outdoor space and some of the outdoor parking spots. So we are going to be funneling the majority of the cars to the decks. I mean, I know, I know, I know, I know former chairman Dunstan would be all over this. He's a free parking is one of his big things. So <laughs> I, I mean, I, it's interesting. Uh, I was, we kind of had in the back of our mind when we started all the, the whole relief and recovery budget, something about parking. And of course my thing was, well, maybe that'll be what the city jumps in on. But I do think that um, a month 
I kind of like the idea. Laura, you, I mean, you like it, don't you? Yeah, we got to do something. So hey, can I, can I <clears throat> ask a question? What the hundred thousand that we did last year, was that for a month or was that for how, what period of time? Well, it was for the month of June, but it was limited to Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays. Right. So All right. I, I just think thinking out loud here, I, I agree with Lori. It should be seven day, days a week for a month. And, and, and I don't think it would be, that much more expensive because unfortunately we don't have the traffic flow that we had probably last year. Um, but we should definitely do it seven days a week for a whole month. And, and I would say just thinking out loud, if the city wants to, to join in, I'd do it for the rest of the summer too, for July and August. And uh, we go halves and the city pays for half. And if they don't want to do it and then let's just take care of the whole month of July. Yeah. So Tim, uh, from a technical point of view here, um, is this something that we could potentially pass a resolution um, for the month of July or the remainder of June and the month of July and then try and keep track of it at some point and get reports back and decide if we wanted to extend it any further down the road? Yeah. The month of June is already covered. The city is not going to charge for okay. index in the month of June, uh, so that's already already done. Uh, it's my understanding that lacking a, a DDA action, the city would start charging for the month of July, including monthly passes and those sorts of things. Okay. Um, you could clearly. I am looking for a resolution if you wanted to take action today. I didn't provide one because. Uh, you know, the board could have gone in a couple of different ways on it. So if you do want to do July, I would look for a resolution today for the DDA to provide funding uh, to make parking in, in all of the decks free. If you want to do it seven days a week, uh, that should be part of your resolution. If you wanted to do it uh, only certain days of the week, that should be part of your resolution. Um, you can obviously review it at your July meeting. And if you wanted to extend it to August, you could decide at that time to extend it uh, through the month of August. If, as Mr. Yazbek indicated, you want to DDA to ask the city commission to participate in some fashion for August, you should include that uh, as either a separate resolution or as potentially a second paragraph of one resolution. Okay. Uh, well, I'll let you go first, Jenny. You, you go ahead. Yeah. So, are we also including? So, Tim, you said something interesting there with the monthly passes. So, we would be paying for folks who normally would pay for their parking. We would we would subsidize that. If in this. If, if they are aware that the city's leaving the gates up, and or they can just come in and go, uh, I'm sure they wouldn't buy them. And so, yes, you would be, as they pull tickets, they would be able to come and go. So not for the whole month, basically, but, but that, like on a daily rate. In other words, in other words, if somebody came three times, then we'd get hit with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're not very... Yeah, there's no, there's no way to track who's coming in and out. All, all we can track is somebody pulled a ticket. Oh, you don't have monthly pucks. That's what I guess I'm looking at. So there are no, there's no one who buys a monthly puck for a, for a downtown parking lot. Oh, well, for the decks is what we're talking about. Not. not yes, but that's what I mean. But don't, yes, they, you don't buy, have a they, monthly. They buy a, they get a fob or a key card kind of thing that you wave at it and come through. My point was, if they know you're providing it free, they won't purchase one. Right. Okay. Are we looking at capping this or just what, what, whatever the number is? Well, again, last time you capped it at 100,000 based on estimates. Uh, I would agree with your comment. I wouldn't expect it to, as, as Tony said too, I'm not sure what it'll be. Um, the other thing that I would point out to you is we have a lot of construction workers that are doing Henry Ford building that are parking in the 11 mile deck right now. 
yeah. they would be coming and going. Um, so it's not not entirely customer driven um, all day long. What do you guys think on an amount? Well, has a parking pass, people not buying their parking passes the last three months? That's correct. So you've lost that revenue. It's my understanding. Okay. Um, it's tricky. So it's a slippery slope. That is. It, it, well, especially trying to figure it out because before we did Thursday through Sunday, and, and then now we're dealing with a, a smaller workforce. I wonder if you did it for four hours. I think it's trickier, but yeah. then you're paying for a group of time, not their eight hour shift at a, if they're working. All right. That would be difficult. Yeah. Um, I was the also thing. concerned that the last time, the last time we did it, I was concerned that uh, obviously it's easy for somebody to see whether the gate's down or not. If the gate's down, obviously they know they have to pay. Uh, and if the gate's up, they don't have to pay. But I was concerned that there was some confusion, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday versus getting it free on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, so I don't know, you know, I, I lean towards the, the, the seven day a week type thing. Um, particularly if we're only holding it to one month period of time. Um, I don't know, that's my thoughts. Uh, Director Osman. Can I, let me, let me. Oh, go ahead, Tony. Go ahead, Tony, you go ahead. Okay, sorry, I, I just, the, the perfect solution would be if there was a way to say, if you produce a receipt, if you have, if you spent it, you know, if you shop or, or have a receipt from any downtown establishment, your parking's covered. That would eliminate like office workers and the construction workers. And I just, I don't know if we have that capability, but that would be a wonderful, you know, problem solver right there. We don't have attendance at all the garages, do I mean, do we want to go that way? No. Well, no, but we have technology, I guess. I believe uh, the way Birmingham does it is you still have to put in a card or you have to pull a ticket. So there are gates aren't open. Um, so if you do get it free, you stick that card back in and it says, Oh, no charge and lets you through. I would think I see it. I just, there's gotta be a way to keep these monthly folks paying their parking tab, I guess, well, versus us subsidizing it. Here's the thing, we're already we're only doing a month. So the bottom line is they probably already made their decision of whether they're buying July or not. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, no? <laughs> no, because of the fact that they're not all back and they know the city is struggling. I mean, I, I, do, I wouldn't be buying my ticket, my, my parking pass till I knew I had to go back to work. But, 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 but I guess, I guess I'm a little confused because I, th I thought, I, well, I don't know. I thought the majority of people aren't back at work. That's my point. Okay. But yeah. if so they wouldn't be buying their pass anyway. They're not, I don't know. Yeah. Either way, I guess they wouldn't be buying a pass. If, yeah. Yeah. No, but there are, there are some smaller firms allowing people to go back because they're right. under 10 employees. They can, they can figure out their social distancing policies. Yeah. Um, that's a challenge, right? And, and we do have a few of those in downtown, in the downtown region. What, what so, do you think of this? Tim, if I'm not mistaken, I think we had about uh, 900,000 in reserve, plus we got another 500 back in from the four street sidewalk. So we got 1.4. Uh, what do you guys think about picking a number and saying we'll cover up to whether it's 100 grand, whether it's 125,000 for the month of July and then call it a day? And get the signs up, and we can we can promote the heck out of it. It you know this it makes it fair for everybody. I know I know uh, Dave Gillum when he was on the board, he wasn't real 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 didn't like the rideshare program because he thought well we've got these bonds that we have on these on these decks and we're pulling people away. Well, this way they can cover that for a month. So, well, this would all, I mean, this would absolutely would help the city. There's no doubt about it that this would help the city. I would think uh, you know not mm -hmm. being dependent upon. 100% of, Parking. you know, yeah. So, I mean, um, we, we would be helping out in that way too. I like Matt's idea. Uh, I'm going to suggest that we, we uh, maybe um, 
put a hundred thousand dollar cap on this, but if we could, Tim, add, the, you said last time we did this, there was some additional associated costs in terms of the signs and any promotion or something along that line? We got, the, we got the signs already made, and I think last time Sean, Sean and Tim put them up. <laughs> yeah, the only the only problem with it it says says June on it, so we'd have to have that figure out something. We have to get that reworded. Can we make evergreen sign, I guess, for uh, going I, forward. <laughs> I'll just say that as far as marketing it, uh, we just approved a mil, uh, you know so much yeah. money and so many different avenues of promotion and marketing. If if, we, if that's not enough to get the message out, uh, we're doing something wrong. So just uh, I agree right. with, with Matt, and, and I'll make a motion uh, to allocate $100,000 for the month of July parking reimbursement to the city uh, capped at $100,000 for seven days a week. And, and, and can we for seven parking? And Tim, can we put it? Do we can we put in the motion? Our next our next meeting is July fifteenth, which is perfect. So we can look and see where we're, we'll be able to see where we're at by then. Maybe Does that make sense? Oh, I, I don't I don't need it in the motion. We'll just let you know where where you're at. Okay. Yeah. We'll just put it back yeah. on the agenda. Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. So uh, technically, here I have a uh, a motion on the table by Director Yesbeck. I'll second it. Second by Director London. Any more questions or discussions regarding this? Okay. Uh, I'm going to do a roll call vote again. Uh, uh, Director Yesvik. Director yes. Yesvik? Yes. Okay. Uh, Director London? Yes. Director Brake? Yes. Director Roswick? Yes. Director Riley? Yes. And I will vote yes. Seeing no opposition, that motion passes. Our last item on the agenda today, other businesses and reports. Tim, anything you need to add here? Um, well, just for your information, I, I, just because it came up earlier, the, the city did have, a, or does have the COVID-19 temporary use permits. As of today, when a um, few hours ago, anyways, I haven't seen any more come in. We've had a total of 12 applications. Not all of those are in the downtown. Um, five of them have been approved and seven are pending and waiting for some additional information from one department or another, whether it's the police or engineering or the planning office. But uh, as of today, we've, we've only got 12 in. And again, they're, they're not all downtown. That's for expansion of like outdoor areas? Yes. Wow, only 12? Yep. I have had some businesses reach out to me and I've provided them links to the application uh, as, as late as yesterday. I sent a business the application, they were inquiring about it, but I was informed that they hadn't yet applied. Um, so hopefully we'll see some more applications come in. Um, it's uh, Sometimes it's slow for the community to absorb it and kind of react to it, but uh, and, hopefully, and it, hopefully we get some in before the summer. You know, it it uh, is every it is everything from uh, cafes for restaurants to outside fitness classes to uh, some other items. So no, it's been been pretty open ended. Uh, the last thing I'd point out, you may most of you have probably seen the. Mast arm traffic signals are going in along 11 mile road, which you're providing some of the funding. Okay. I, I'm, st I'm stunned on that, on, on, the, uh, on the outdoor expansions. I, I drove through both downtown Ann Arbor and downtown Birmingham um, Monday and Tuesday. And there are like, Birmingham's already out into the streets. Uh, Ann Arbor is, they're using, what they've done is along Main Street, they're leaving the sidewalk right along the, the entrances to, to the retail and, and the restaurants. And then like about five feet and everything else is tables. And then they close it down on the weekends. They close the all of Main Street down on the weekends. Well, so far we've only got one application that would close a street. Uh, and that's still pending, but uh, okay. that's all we've got in. Everyone else is either using uh, parking space or parking spaces or private property. Okay. So Tim, do they, they I mean, if 
there a thought that they're hoping the city will just proactively do this? And maybe that's why they haven't put in the application? To close the street, you mean? Yeah. No, because the city's position was we weren't going to try and tell people what they needed to do. If, if as a business gotcha. owner, you want to put out extra tables and chairs, you let us know that. We didn't want to close or, or close things off and uh, have businesses not want to do that. So we're relying on them to tell us this is what they'd like to do. Because um, okay. we don't know it. They may want the front parking spot for uh, pickup or, or other things. So, so we're, not, we're not dictating. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Does anybody have anything else they want to bring to the table today? I have just two very quick things for the board's information. Uh, number one, uh, you may notice Worry Free is out installing all of the new bike racks, the branded uh, bike racks that are close to the, the city's color branding and everything. That's uh, occurring this week. Uh, and then secondly, uh, today was the first day of me going out and distributing the first round of grant checks as well. Um, so after this meeting, I'm gonna go back out and do my second round. So I'm gonna go visit Tony after this. Are people happy to see you? Um, you know, when you're handing out a lot of money, you're, you know, everyone wants to be your best friend. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Thanks for all your Mr. work uh, this month on, uh, on all these programs. Yeah. Tony has something to say. Okay. Tony's Tony. trying to say something. Yes. Yes. With all, with all due respect to director Krieger in his absence, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Yeah, I have a motion. <laughs> I have a motion to adjourn by director Yasmik. I'll second it. Second by director London. Okay. Great job, guys. We have gotten so much done in the last three months. We really have. Everybody Thank worked you, very, very hard and very appreciative to staff and all the members of the board, for sure. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, it, it's been uh, a little bit of a ride, but it's a good one. And uh, I will say, just before I call for the roll call vote here, um, uh, I have been out, and I've been out to a couple different communities, and I always end up back in Royal Oak, for sure. And there is there is a nice little vibe going on downtown right now. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of foot traffic out there. Um, with the reduction of uh, capacities, there's people that are out there and they're waiting waiting for tables and waiting to get in the stores to get their products and the coffee shops and and and, and everywhere else that I'm looking. There there's some good vibe out there and luckily we got some good weather and um, like it um, it's very it's very positive. Very positive for sure. Cool. So to all those others out there, come down to Royal Oak and see us when you get a chance. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, roll call vote. Uh, Director London. Yes. Director Brake. Uh, you're you're muted. muted, sir. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Uh, Director Rosbeck. Yes. Director Yesbeck. Yes. Director Riley. Yes. And I will vote yes, and we are adjourned. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, everybody.